Hello and welcome to something a little bit different. Uh, as people will know, I'm an aviation artist, and this painting was going to be done for me aviation artists group which is Mavis Manchester Aviation Artists Society and unfortunately at the moment is a bit up in arms where we go in with this comp it may well be cancelled at the moment anyway this is the image I'm working for from they're all from my own photo gallery anyway, the leading one was the same guy but in a different model of pit special it's his newer aircraft, the one I've painted is his older one and it was quite a nice image to work from so something I could knock about and alter a bit Anyway, the first stage we come to, what I do, either I'll make up something in Photoshop or I'll work directly from an image. So the first thing I do is use a ho an overhead projector, project onto the canvas and then I'll go all around all the outlines with a pencil and then I'll take it off the projection board and I'll tidy up the uniball I, I find mark of the car which puts in an ink and I'll rub the pencil out and just have my ink outline I'm going to work from anyway this is normally the first part I get to it can be knocked about any, anyway as it does get knocked about but this is the first part getting basic colours in like I'll start with the sky <coughs> get a presentable sky in and then I'll do bushes or the ground the first thing I'll knock in and knock together is a believable background and what I were working with with this was comp complementary colours which is the red and the green and it makes them fight for ground with each other but at the same time I've subdued the background colours a little made them a little softer and I make the actual subject colours harsher so it stands out against its background and going on to the next one we can see where it's starting to take a bit of shape it's still nowhere near what it will be at the end series because I do knock stuff about and mess about with stuff but there's all the basic colours in there and I think at this point most of the canvas was covered so it takes a little bit to get to this point and but you're constantly evaluating and re-evaluating what will look good what won't look good some people have said I should take the bush away from the top of the leading edge of the wing but I quite like it there I think that's personal taste but it did evolve a little as I went on but it's still not something that will stay as a definite it may well get taken away or oh, added to anyway here we move on to the next stage where I'm starting playing with shadowing and highlights and stuff on the aircraft I use very light yellow 
a lemon yellow to lighten off the red. So it gives a, in effect, a very light orangey red, which it looks like to me in the <coughs> on the actual photograph. You never really go fully off photographs though, because they can be a bit misleading in a lot of ways. Because basically the camera just sees things in one exposure, whereas your eyes will flick over something and see them in many exposures, they don't make stuff out the camera won't do, so that's where as an artist you think I can knock that forward, I can knock it back and there's a lot comes into it you learn over the years, but it all comes together gradually and you start getting nicer and nicer paintings. I'm by no means what you call a Rembrandt at the moment, but I think I can knock the odd pleasing image out. And on this one you can see I've started, it was a Morgan Cars sponsor, so I've started on the Morgan Cars logos on it. Which it had a lot to do, the Mog stood for Morgan, obviously. On the, they made it look like a Second World War aircraft code. But and the Morgan Aero wings look quite pleasing. And next, I go on to starting making the background a bit more visible, and also. I'm trying to put speed blur in it at the same time to make the background a bit blurred which involves just putting dabs of paint on of the required colour then dragging a fan brush through so it puts speed blur onto the background it looks better at the final stages but here you can see I've put bits of clover on the airfield and dandelions and you can see bits of the trees and blurred and stuff so it's giving quite a nice background a backdrop to it because as you viewed it on the day the aircraft zipping past the background which they're quite a fast little aircraft and the stunts they do, they move very quick to the eye. This one that he did, he actually took off, then as soon as he took off, he tipped it over onto its side, then pointed the nose upwards and pulled up, so it was a very quick manoeuvre, looked very impressive. Um, one I thought I'd have to, I've photographed it and I thought I'll have to capture it in art. So, here's me attempt at it. It only gets better, but... Anyway, getting close on to me next one. Which I haven't really covered here, I've done it here. But it's so many things, you yeah miss out at that point you can see it on this one as well I've done the chrome nose spinner which really chrome you're concentrating on painting highlight shadows low lights and reflections all in one to make chrome believable it's a bit bright on this photograph but it gets better on the other ones but as you can see there's a bit more work on the background as well and a bit more work on the aircraft detailing it's actually a fairly big paint in this one but 
really. It's uh, it's a fairly high hours one because this one it's being painted in artist soils. Like you have student quality, which is the beginners' oils, and the ones I use are full full artist quality. They're a lot more expensive. But the better pigment loading, better colour fastness, and a lot better to work with. So, I'll not say it do not make that much difference, but if they're saying they don't make that much difference, they don't do that much detailed work, or basically, if they're saying there's not much difference between normal quality paints. An artist quality paints, they just throw in paints on a canvas. Which to some degree is what I do. But I concentrate on a bit of precision as well. Um, once you get to this stage you start going down onto the smaller brushes and the next one is basically where I'm calling it more or less complete. Uh, you can see the tinting in the canopy that's been done with what we call uh, glaze in oil painting. It's like a turquoise glaze. Uh, you can make out the chrome better on the prop. It's got more details in it now and it's basically pretty much what I'm going to call the finished finished painting. Bar a couple of little very small details and stuff, it's what I'm calling finished. Um, you can see I've done glazes and I've picked details out. The only thing that's really missing is details on the tail wheel. Apart from that, I think any further work really will detract from it and start making it regress and not be as good a work of art. It's pretty much as is, as I want it. And I'm pretty proud of it. And as is typical, I think it had done well in the competition. But with the competition being cancelled, we don't know whether we're going to be doing online voting or cancelling the voting or voting at a later date. But hey ho, it's always typical. I always come up with a really good painting when I can't compete with it. I remember when I had my motorcycle accident and I'd done a really good painting and I couldn't make it to meeting. It didn't go and so I wasn't voted on and people said once they'd seen it, if I'd have been in it, it had won. I've only won trophies once, but I do have the potential when I put the work in, but eh ho, oh, just luck doesn't seem to be on my side when I produce good, which such is life really, isn't it? But anyway, if you've enjoyed, please subscribe. If you want further notifications, don't forget to press the bell icon so you get notifications of any new videos from me. And all that remains is saying thank you for watching and goodbye for now.